Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're gonna show you how to improve that ankle flexibility and strength, AKA ankle mobility. But before we get into that, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance. And it doesn't get much cooler than that. So go ahead and click it. Ready? Let's dive into this one. Alright guys, the topic of the day, how to improve your ankle flexibility and strength. I've got a few different exercises here that we're going to be showing you. Today some of them fall in the mobilization category, so I will be using some tools. Make note though that you do not have to perform these using the tools that I use. You can do them simply just at home with the equipment that you have that makes the movement or the position possible and you can replicate it to the best of your ability without these mobility tools. However, they will likely help you change that flexibility and that strength a lot quicker if you are using these mobility tools. So I will say that. Either way, the more regularly you visit these positions and these exercises that I'm gonna show you today, the more likely you're gonna see the change that you wanna see in your foot and ankle overall. So keep that in mind, consistency is king, and the more that you practice this stuff, the more you're gonna see range of motion open up where you're lacking, and it will overall benefit movement in general. The foot is our first contact with the ground, and a lot of us unfortunately have very dysfunctional feet these days. So restoring your foot and ankle health is a huge part of overall restoring your ability to move better. The foot actually allows us to generate something that we call torsion, which is the ability to actually stabilize the lower limb here. So if we do not have the foot with good contact in the ground, our torsion is limited. And the torsion is the effect of our foot actually with friction in the ground and our hip in external rotation or internal rotation creating a torque. So that torque and the friction of the foot is what produces the torsion that we're working with. And that's what's really important to understand is when we really don't have a base and when our ankle doesn't allow our foot to connect to the floor, then we are missing out on stability of the lower limb altogether. And that's something to keep in mind here. So our hip is directly related to our foot and ankle health as well as our knee in general. So they're a team, they work together, and if you have knee issues or hip issues, there's a good chance that there's something related to the foot going on there and you're in the right direction because we're already looking at improving that flexibility and strength today. So overall that mobility is gonna improve, but just things to keep in the back of your mind as we're working on these exercises today. So without further ado, let's dive into these. The first exercise we're gonna show here is called a banded distraction. So here I'm using a resistance band or pull-up band and a bench. And I want the band to be anchored below the height of the bench so that it's pulling at a downward angle at my ankle on the front side. What we're really looking at is my ability to dorsiflex the ankle here. And the band is helping the joints articulate. So generally we have our tibia, our fibula, and our talus really articulating here to work together to create the mechanics of ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. What I wanna do with the bench is pull myself so that the knee is over the middle or small toes. So middle to small toes. We don't wanna be in line with the big toe at all. And my foot should have really three points of contact as I'm working here. The first metatarsal behind the big toe, the fifth metatarsal behind the smallest toe, and the heel. So we have a what's called a tripod foot, and we wanna make sure that that is maintained even as I drive the knee over the toes here. The second position I'm gonna work at with this band on the ankle is actually restoring pronation of the ankle while the hip is in external rotation. These are both really important positions for our squat. We need to be able to externally rotate the hip, we need to have ankle dorsiflexion, and we need to have ankle pronation so we don't lose contact with the ground when we're squatting. Here's a better angle so you can kind of see from the front here. 
I'm capping the foot with one hand and prying the knee open with the other. So in a way I'm assisting that base, but we're opening up that ankle pronation and range of motion to allow for better mechanics of your squat. Next, we're gonna use the band for one more exercise here, and we're gonna leave it at the same anchor point. So you don't have to change anything, just move the bench out of the way. We're gonna place that band at the back of the knee this time. And what we're looking at is our ability to dorsiflex the ankle when the hip and the knee are in extension. In those first two, we were looking when the hip and the knee were in flexion. For the setup of this exercise, make sure that front foot has that tripod foot, so we have three points of contact, the leg is fully extended, and I'm stepping back as far as I can with the knee being able to bend in line with the front leg while my toes are rolled up. So you'll see me roll up to the toes as my knee comes forward. What I'm doing is engaging the glutes, engaging the quadriceps, and driving my heel to the floor from that back leg there. I want the back leg to have the toes point toward the heel of the front leg. I don't want that foot to turn open. So that's putting my hip in internal rotation. And that's where we wanna to be to create stability when the hip is in, in extension like this. So we need that internally rotated position to create stability in this movement. Next, we're gonna address the soft tissues of the foot and ankle. And I'm gonna be using a mobility tool called Voodoo Floss. If you've never heard of Voodoo Floss before, it is designed for compression and essentially the overall blood flow restricted effect of it, which is what makes it beneficial. So we're restoring the sliding surfaces of the skin, the muscle, the nerves in there, but we also get the benefit of restricted blood flow for a short duration here. And really I'm only keeping it on for about five minutes tops in this position. I'm gonna wrap both sides and here we go. So with this one, we're gonna start with active supination and active pronation. What I wanna do is feel the musculature engaging as tight as I can for five seconds in each position. Five seconds in pronation, five seconds in supination. You'll see my toes reacting as well, so I might get a little active splay as I'm trying to do this. You might see my big toes extending. That's all from engaging the musculature of the foot and ankle to create those movements. I want to keep my legs as straight as I can, and I want to sit relatively tall while I do this, keeping that posture. The next position we're going to go to is a butt to heel sit with the toes tucked under. Oftentimes we lose extension of the toes. We need to be able to extend the toes, otherwise we have things occur like bunions. If we don't have toe extension, that toe starts to turn in, and this can also be a result of our footwear that we have. Oftentimes we have a narrow toe box affecting the angle of our toes, which starts to throw off our gait. So we want extension, we need to have that movement in our toes. From here, I'm gonna be leaning back. If you can't sit butt to heels in the first place, that's our first place to begin. We need to just get butt to heels with the toes tucked under and relatively comfortable. Your knees might be screaming, your toes and feet might be screaming at first. It's just a matter of repetition. The Voodoo Floss helps get through that a little bit, but either way, practicing it with consistency is what's gonna be king. Here we're gonna to go to a Seiza sit, which is actually in a plantar flex position. So this one's unique, because we haven't looked at plantar flexion yet, and this is what we need to be able to get into. In this position, my butt is all the way to the floor with my, with my feet on either side of it. So we wanna make sure that first of all, you're able to sit to the heels. Don't worry about going to the floor in the first place. And if you can't go to the floor, place a pillow under your butt, do something to bolster up a little bit at first and work your way down gradually. Here, I'm going into even further plantar flexion by leaning back, engaging the glutes, and getting the quads to play their role as well. So you can see how the chain works. The knee has to be healthy, the hip has to be healthy, everything has to be working together to create these movements. Next, I'm going to a squat, and I'm just gonna hold the bottom of this squat, and you can try different positionings of the feet, so if you want a narrow squat, that's gonna be a little more difficult to hold, but I'm simply in dorsiflexion once again with those ankles wrapped, three points of contact on the feet, and external rotation at the hip. 
The last one we're showing here is a good old calf raise and heel dip. So I'm actively pulling my heels down below the level of the squat rack here. I actually prefer steps, but for you guys, I'm showing it off the squat rack. Quads engaged, glutes engaged, so I have my shoulders right in line with my ankles and I'm nice and tall in this position. So once again, dropping down as low as I can and then driving up as high as I can through the ball of the foot with those toes actively splaying as I drive up. When I dip down, you're gonna see the heel actually, or the toes, I should say, grip the step or grip whatever you're working off of. When you get a little bit more comfortable, you can take it to a single leg position, which is actually gonna load the leg a little bit more, and we'll test that strength a little bit more on each side. The nice thing about the Voodoo Floss is we get that blood flow restricted benefit, so even at a lower level intensity, if I'm doing repetitions, it's gonna help me increase strength in this area. All right, now we're getting into some more strength exercises and specific strength exercises with no equipment. So here we're gonna look at the actual intrinsic strength of your foot, starting with a toe splay. Now, as I already kind of mentioned, our footwear is changing our feet overall, and we need to be barefoot more often. If you watch my videos, every single one, I'm barefoot. Outside, I'm barefoot. You gotta be barefoot regularly. So on this one, I'm using my fingers to help splay my toes, but then I'm also doing an active contraction where my feet squeeze my fingers as tight as they can for five seconds and then release. When the feet release, you'll see me readjust my fingers going a little bit deeper into the splay. So I'm trying to interlace those fingers and those toes as deep as I can get in there. And every time I flex and release, flex and release, that's allowing me to get a little deeper into that position here. Next, we're gonna see if we can actively splay the toes by themselves. So you'll see me put space between my toes, just using the strength of my foot here, thinking of separating those toes, and there's the relax. So once again, contracting for about five seconds, actively splaying, and then releasing that flex. And you can see how we can create space. This is what our functional foot should look like. If you do not have these movements, that is dysfunction. And that means that we're gonna be lacking in mobility upstream at the knee, at the hip, it's gonna suffer. So we wanna make sure our feet are in good shape here. For the last of our foot strength here, we're looking at our ability to actually extend our great toe while keeping the smallest toes down and still maintaining our, tri maintaining our tripod foot. So once again, trying to keep a tripod foot, first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal heel, as I actively extend the great toe. And I'm gonna do that for the same thing, about five seconds hold, and then release down. Then we're gonna go ahead and switch it so that the big toe stays down, and I'm actively extending the small toes while the big toe stays down. This is gonna help me strengthen, once again, pronation and supination, and overall control of the foot. So you can see how we're building the strength of the musculature that surrounds the ankle to overall improve that flexibility and strength. And to finish off here, I'm just gonna show you guys some positions to regularly visit to naturally improve the strength of your foot and ankle. So here is a global plantar flex position. Now obviously if you can't get here today, that's not a problem. Start with just sitting with your butt to heels and the ankle plantar flexed. Then eventually we wanna get to a point where we can actually elevate the foot or the heel from the floor, I should say. And from there, engaging the quads, engaging the glutes in this position as I go into global plantar flexion. Next is a 90-90 sit. Front leg with the hip in external rotation, back leg with the hip in internal rotation. And we're tying together that connection of the hip and the foot here. You can actively lean over that front leg without the hands connecting to the leg to make it a little bit harder, 
or you could practice the internal rotation actively on the back leg, trying to lift the foot from the floor as high as you can or lifting it passively and then slowly lowering it. Those are also two options that you could add for challenge here. Next, simply squat more. If you can't get into a deep squat, first of all, get into a deep squat holding on to something. Now this does show our mobility overall is lacking when we need to hold on to something for balance. It's usually the ankles in the first place. So we wanna make sure you have those three points of contact at the feet. You're trying to maintain as neutral of a spinal column as possible. Your knees are pulling open and away from one another. And basically from there, when you're in this deep position, we wanna search for any low grade tensions that are just flying under the radar. So what muscles are tight trying to hold that position and are really fighting you instead of helping you in that? So really search for those. From there, once you get a little more advanced in your squat, you can get into playing with the ability to actively internal and external rota externally rotate the hips by shifting. So that requires good pronation and supination of the ankle as I shift side to side here. That showing a little more control as well at the hip as I move from position to position. So you can play with those deep squats, have a little bit of fun with them. The last trick you can use to actually open up some more dorsiflexion here is loading up the ankle or the knee, I should say, over the ankle that you need to improve dorsiflexion on. But once again, I need to have my three points of contact. I need to make sure that base is connected to the floor well. And from there, it's only gonna improve the mobility overall. And there you guys have it, a systematic approach to help you guys improve your ankle flexibility and strength. We're adjusting the joint mechanics, making sure the joint articulates well. We're looking at the soft tissues that surround the joint, and then we're actually incorporating some strength exercises as well. And that is the fastest route you're gonna get to improved ankle mobility and strength. If you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by giving that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share it with a friend. If you have not already, take a moment to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. And last but not least, if you guys wanna join me for seven days of pre-programmed mobility training that are geared toward helping you identify your limitations that could be putting you at risk for injury or simply are performance killers, then drop by the description down below and sign up for the seven day mobility training challenge. It's 15 minute sessions of mobility each day, no equipment necessary, and it really is helping you identify restrictions that could be killing your game right now. So, take advantage of it. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a good one.